In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at graphing the quadratic function negative 2x squared plus 6x plus 1. And we're going to do that by creating a table, and we're going to start our table at our vertex. Our vertex is always formed by writing the equation for our x-coordinate, which is equal to negative b over 2a. So I need to identify what that a and b value are. So we're going to write out our a, b, and c just to get in the habit of doing so. And our a value is negative 2, which is the coefficient of our x squared term. Our b value is 6, or the coefficient of our x term. And our c value is 1, or the constant. So if I substitute those values into my formula, I get the opposite of b, or negative 6 divided by 2 times my a, which would give me negative 4, and that simplifies to 3 halves. So I'm going to plug 3 halves in the center of my table, because 3 halves represents that axis of symmetry that cuts my parabola perfectly in half. So if that's my starting value, and I increase from there consistently, and do the same values below, I'll create that symmetry. So I'm going to choose in this case, since I was given three halves, I'm going to choose to have my increments increase by one half. You can choose any value, so your neighbor or your best friend might have a different table than you would have, but you should still end up with the exact same graph. So I'm going to choose to increase by one half, up from 3 halves, which would give me 2, and then 2.5. I'm going to choose to then decrease by the same amount. So I'm going to decrease by 1 half, which would give me 1, and then decrease by another half, which in this particular case is going to give me a half as well. So for every value, I want to plug those values back in and evaluate my function at each x value on my table. I'm going to begin with 1 half, and when I get an answer for 1 half, it's going to go in both the very first and the very last slot because of the fact that we have this symmetry. So I'm going to use my graphing calculator to evaluate at 1 half. You can naturally do this in your head as well. And I'm going to replace every x value in my original function with 0.5 or 1 half. So it would give me negative 2 times 0.5, or instead of my x squared, plus 6 times 0.5, again replacing 0.5 for my x, and then plus 1. This leads a value of 3.5. So I'm going to plug 3.5 into my table because my function at 1 half is 3.5. So this indicates that my x value of 1 half has a y value of 3.5, and that my x value of 2.5 also has a y value of 3.5. So I'm going to do the same thing now with 1. I'm going to evaluate my function at 1, and I'm going to hit second on my calculator, and then enter, because that's going to bring back up the original entry that I just put in. And I'm going to replace every 0.5 or every x value, now this time with a 1. So negative 2 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 plus 1 gives me 5. So I'm going to replace, or I'm going to fill in, each value of 5 for both my x values of 1 and the, its corresponding value of 2. So the only one I have left is my vertex at 3 halves. And if I plug in 3 halves just the way we have been doing, I'm going to get a result of 5.5. Now that I've completed my table, I can go through and graph each of these rows in my table as an ordered pair. So I'm going to graph the ordered pair 2.5, 3.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 
I'm going to graph the ordered pair 2, comma, 5, then 3 halves, comma, 5.5, 1, comma, 5, and a half, comma, 3.5. And you're going to do that by hand, but I want to show you how to check your work using the graphing calculator. So you're going to press the Y equals button, and you're going to type in this screen the function that you're given. So negative 2x squared plus 6x and then plus a 1. And to graph this, or to view the graph, you're going to hit the Graph button. And if your window doesn't end up looking like this graph, you're going to want to hit Zoom and then 6 so that we're looking at the exact same screen together. So from this, I can see that any of these ordered pairs should match up with each of the points that are on my graphing calculator. If I actually want to check and verify on my graphing calculator that I've found the vertex correctly by hand, then I am going to want to calculate something. And in order to calculate that, I need to press second and then trace. Since I want to find a maximum in this particular case, I'm going to select number four. And notice my graphic calculator is asking me for a left bound. Where my cursor is right now, that's where my vertex is or my maximum. The cursor on the graphing calculator is actually asking me to be somewhere to the left. So, so long as I'm anywhere to the left of my computer cursor, I can hit enter. Now notice it's asking me for a right bound. That means I want to arrow to the right so that I get to any place that's actually to the right of my vertex and hit enter. And then lastly, I want to arrow back so that my cursor is blinking where I think my vertex is located and hit enter for a third time. This gives me my maximum or my vertex, 1.49999 is the same as 1.5 or 3 halves and then the y value corresponds to my y value of 5.5. So I can use this to always verify that I have gotten the correct vertex when I'm doing my homework. The last thing that I want to do is take a look at my domain and range. I know that for any quadratic function my domain is always going to be from negative infinity to infinity. My range, however, I can either take a look at my table or at my graph. My table, I notice, has no minimum, but the highest value that it gets to is 5.5. The same is true if I take a look at my graph on my graphing calculator. The highest value that I get to is 5.5, but it just goes down from there. If I trace, I can see that I am going all the way down. I just get to 5.5, and then I keep going back down again. So again, my range goes from negative infinity to 